All right, great. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, I, I'm Carrie Kilpatrick. I'm going to introduce myself a little bit further on the next slide. But uh, for those of you who are here, this is our diversity, equity, and inclusion in action at Laurel Ridge. And we have several representatives from our DEI Council here today. I'm glad I'm not going to be presenting alone. Um, so just to jump right into introductions, so who are we? Well, uh, there's me. I'm Carrie Kilpatrick, as established. Uh, I am the librarian at the Fauquier campus uh, for Laurel Ridge. Um, and I'm also going to be the incoming DEI Council Chair, which we'll talk a little bit more about what DEI Council actually is. But you can know that I'm going to be chairing it for the next year. Um, and also just a little bit about me. I have worked at Laurel Ridge for 10 years now. So this is a full decade of being here. And I personally love working at the college. I'm happy to continue for many more years to come. Um, and I am going to throw it over to Taj and let her introduce herself. Hi, everyone. My name is Taj Marie Rowe. I am one of the academic advisor here. I'm primarily at the Middletown campus, and I am the former chair of DEI. I have been with the college since 2019. But fun fact, I'm also an alumni of um, the former LSCC now Laurel Ridge. So it's nice being at the college. Pass it over to Andy. Fantastic. Last but definitely not least, I am uh, excited to be a part of this uh, presentation today. My name is Andy Geyerson. I'm a development officer here at Laurel Ridge uh, in the office of the foundation. We are actively within our community looking for folks that want to support our students through scholarships or funds uh, and just doing some community outreach as well. Uh, I'm part of the education and awareness subcommittee. Uh, I'm actually the chair and we're working diligently to bring great events and great uh, community connections uh, within DEI. Uh, I have been here uh, within uh, Laurel Ridge uh, for about almost two years, uh, but I was here prior, so I have a bit of a hodgepodge um, history, uh, but I'm excited to be a part of this uh, conversation today. Great. Thank you, guys. All right. So... As far as what is DEI, so we do want to establish that before we get too much further, since we're talking so much about um, what the DEI Council is, what we do here at the college. Um, and so as far as what DEI stands for, as you saw in the title of the uh, slideshow, it stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so we're going to define those a little bit further on our next slide here. Um, so starting with diversity, um, I think a lot of times people have different ideas of what diversity can mean, um, whether that's different races or, you know, different cultures in a group or organization. Um, I will say that diversity encapsulates a lot of different facets of um, people. Uh, we all have different elements of diversity. Um, there's different types of dimensions. There's kind of those core internal dimensions that we have, and that's what we most closely identify with. And it's harder for us to really like willfully change on our own. Um, that can include um, ethnicity, race, uh, sexual orientation, or, uh, orientation, gender identity, um, your physical ability, your language use. It's kind of what you're born into a lot of times. Um, but there's other elements of diversity that include secondary dimensions. Um, that can be things that we have greater control over and ability to change. Um, so kind of how we present ourselves and our appearance. Um, of, our educational backgrounds, though that can be somewhat limited, you know, depending on the person, but you can kind of choose, you know, uh, what education you go into, um, you know, your veteran status, your geographic location. Um, and then there's uh, dimensions, including organizational. So like the workplace that you're in, um, what content area or field that you're in, uh, do you, are you a manager or are you not? Um, how many years of seniority do you have? So if you really think about it, there's lots of different ways that diversity can kind of manifest in each of us. Um, and we all have a, a lot of variety within ourselves. And so uh, don't just think of it as kind of one specific thing. There's lots of elements of diversity that we define ourselves with. So for equity, um, you know, that 
is a little different than equality. Sometimes you hear people use equity and equality um, interchangeably, but equality, you know, can be offering people kind of the same resources, uh, identical resources, whereas equity is really trying to acknowledge that um, sometimes we need to um, actively try to um, accommodate uh, you know, systemic barriers or inequalities that have existed. Um, and so that's that fairness of justice in the way that people are treated and making sure that we acknowledge uh, where there are differences. And so it's not just about equal resources, it's about making sure that we're um, making up for systemic barriers or or inequalities that exist. And then finally, inclusion is that act or practice of including and accommodating people who have been uh, historically excluded. Um, and so it's not really enough to just say that you know, someone has a seat at the table. We really want their voices to be heard as well and uh, hear you know, what they're asking, um, what people are saying and listening to that and actually implementing um, whatever you know changes are being suggested or you know what they're bringing to the table so keep that in mind as we move through the presentation that's kind of what diversity and equity inclusion means to us especially here at the college um, and we want to use that as a jumping point too in talking about privilege um, and so we do want to define privilege and we have a little video because we figured it would probably be kind of tedious for us to just talk the entire time so we're going to let uh, a video do some talking for us and i should have sound shared yep so that will come through um, as well so i'm going to go ahead and start that video and it'll be just a few minutes and then we will continue from there Some people are born into families where they have to walk miles just to get water. All I have to do is turn on a faucet. That's privilege. If you have ever tried to change your speech, if you were embarrassed about your clothes or how if you would never think twice about calling the police or trouble with them. I think privilege is when um, some people have some things and other people don't have things. I feel privilege is something that you don't even really have control over. I think it'd be silly for me to say I don't have a fair amount of privilege considering like the country I live in and the job I get to do and the college I was allowed to go to. I suppose being a white male will help me end up somewhere towards the front, but I'll take a few steps back from being gay. I don't think I'll make it to the front. I think I'll maybe be in the middle. That's just the gut feeling I have. If your parents work nights and weekends to support your family, take one step back. If you can show affection for your romantic partner in public without fear of ridicule or violence, take one step forward. If you were embarrassed about your clothes or house while growing up, take one step back. If you have ever been diagnosed as having a physical or mental illness or disability, take one step back. If you have ever been bullied or made fun of based on something you can't change, take one step back. If you get time off for your religious holidays, take one step forward. If you came from a supportive family environment, if you can see a doctor whenever you feel the need, if you are able to move through the world without fear if of sexual assault, if you took out loans assault, for your education, if there were more than 50 books in your house growing up. So these are your final positions. I think it felt kind of strange for everyone. It's a hard thing to discuss or even reflect on. It was very awkward. I think when you can represent it so visually like this and so immediately, it definitely takes on a new form. Um, I think we were like all joking around in the beginning. It was pretty lighthearted. And as soon as the questions started coming in, the mood shifted immediately. And we all kind of, it was just silent. Just looking back and seeing like a bunch of people behind you is not a good feeling. It's like weird how you want to like hold on to explaining a certain privilege. Like, oh, but that's not actually me because like I had to work really hard for that. So it's, it's weird to like take a step forward when you feel like you're taking a step forward with someone else, but you wear a lot of the baggage of like how those things were hard. It was like more emotional than I thought it would be. It reminded me of when they talk about slavery in high school and you feel like angry for a few days, but then you just realize like, this is how it is. For me, it was 
kind of frustrating almost to look back and see how much further some people were behind me and realizing that, you know, a lot of that stuff, no amount of hard work or even legislation can make up that gap. It's, it's interesting being an Asian American because you kind of, you're not really sure where you fall on the spectrum of privilege. I know that for me, the, one of the reasons I ended up so far back was that there are questions around safety as an African American, as a woman, as a, as a gay woman. Um, there are just so many different ways that I don't feel safe. I feel like I just learned to be grateful for what you have. You know, we're in such a huge society where it's always complaining about what you don't have. It just shows you that for some families, like each family, you're meant to do better. My grandparents did good, my parents did good, and I'll do even better. I, I do think if you're not like aware of privilege, you should do this exercise, but it's more complicated. All right, so um, I hope you guys um enjoyed that video, at least in learning a little bit more about privilege walks. Maybe some of you guys have done privilege walks before, um, but we felt like it was important to watch a video like that before we talk a little bit more about DEI, DEI council um, and kind of establishing the importance of the council, uh, you know, why we were formed, because we're going to talk about the history of the council and um, how it came to be here at the college. Um, and obviously, uh, knowing that they're, everybody's affected by privilege differently, uh, we feel that the council has a really important role in helping raise awareness and address some of these um, inequities in what way we can. So before I move on from that, um, was there anything that stuck out to you guys? I know we're a small group, but we're small but mighty. And so was there anything from the video that really stood out to you or surprised you or maybe didn't surprise you? You've heard it similarly before. I know I'm putting everyone on the spot. <laughs> uh, I'll say something. Yeah, thanks, Erin. <laughs> yeah, 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 no problem. Let me get my camera up. So I was really taken aback by it because I never thought of privilege like in these ways and like just thinking of like where I would have been in this walk. I, I would have been way in the back like not even thinking about like what um, privilege via my parents and like them working night shifts and like that affects everything. So that, that really shocked me. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And I see Athena, thank you for your comment too. Uh, yeah, I know I was gonna say the video might be familiar. It probably circulated a lot since it's from Buzzfeed, but um, I agree with both of you guys that um, it just gets you really thinking about your own forms of privilege. And um, I think everybody has things that they can recognize is some degree of privilege, but it varies so much. And there are definitely parts of yourself you might not have even realized that were privilege or lack of privilege. And so it's always just good to have that self-awareness um, while you're moving throughout the world and while you're interacting with others, you know, it gives you more empathy um, for the others that you're interacting with. Um, so with that all in mind, I am going to hand it over now. Some people are Ooh. born into families where they have to walk miles. I gotta figure out how to, uh, there we go. <laughs> all right, Taj, are you taking over from here? Yes, I am. All right. All right. And so with that definition of privilege and what DEI is, now let's look at what our student population here at Laurel Ridge looks like. And so we wanted to share a little bit of that with you, um, for example, or age um, population. And so we do have at least um, a, quite a number of under 18 um, students here, as you may know or may not know, we do have a dual enrolled program. And so um, at least 8.4% of our students are under 18. We, uh, majority of our students do come from within the ages of 18 to 19, followed by the 20 to 29 students. But also look at the number, we do have quite a number of students who fall within the 40 to 64 range. And so we have not just fresh high school students, but adult students who may be out of the academic pipeline for quite some time. When you look at gender, majority of our students are female, but we do have 
at least 31.5% of um, male students as well, which could definitely increase. In terms of race, um, majority of our students, yes, are Caucasian students, and only 6% are Black African American students, while 86 identified themselves as Hispanic or Latino. Um, in terms of Asian students, it's just 1.8%. Um, and American Indian, Native Alaskan, as you can see, the numbers are quite low, as well as the Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islanders. But at least 11.2% of our students do identify themselves or two or more of these race and ethnicities. So we are a little bit of a melting pot. Yes, if students should um, step into our buildings, they will think, yes, we are predominantly white, but we do have um, different um, students from different backgrounds. And so that is why diversity, equity, and inclusion is so important to Laurel Ridge because we do want to um, show inclusiveness, um, especially when we are trying to um, you know, make connections with our students. And so DEI is very important and you will see this um, message along when we continue with our presentation. But with this population in mind, you kind of you know, digest it a little bit um, as we go along in this presentation. But this here, the demographics definitely shows why DEI is important because we want to make sure we're representative of all our students here at Laurel Ridge. Um, would you mind changing the slide, Carrie? Now, how do we embrace DEI here at Laurel Ridge? And so um, some of the ways that we've been doing so um, is we do have a DEI council, which I will touch on a little bit. I think it's the next slide. Um, but one initiative that was passed since last year is that we're now including students on our DEI council. And so we want to ensure that students are looking out for this application. It's an application process. We select at least two members, um, preferably one from each camp, one of the main campuses. So either from Falkir or Middletown, this application is um, sent out to students at least the end part of the spring semester. So about the ending of May there. And then we will review those application and select um, the respective persons to be a part of the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Council. So be on the lookout if you are ever interested in being a part of our journey here when it comes to DE&I. Also, we have our President's Career Enrichment Program. A lot of students may not know about this, but this is what's going on behind the scene. And so the President's Career Enrichment Program is where faculty staff members can actually apply to be a part of this program. And once selected, they're taken on a journey where they're doing research. And this has a huge amount of the work that they do, do have a equity focus to it. And so they're digging into research to see what issues um, or concerns we have and coming up with solutions. And um, the last President career, career Enrichment Program definitely provided feedback and objectives that could help us with the journey of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So those are some of the things that are going on behind the scenes when it comes to faculty and staff. Also, for all new students, do you know we also have our TRIO and Disability Services. Now, um, the TRIO Student Support Services here at Laurel Ridge is designed to help students who may um, qualify one of three ways, whether they're income eligible, have a documented disability, or is a first-generation student. And by first-generation students, I mean students who um, whose parents did not go or obtain a four-year degree. So um, if you do fall within that category, TRIO is a great support system here on campus. They provide free printing for students. They also provide extra um, advising support um, and a lot more, um, you know, like the free printing, advising, as I mentioned earlier, but a lot more services are behind the scenes of TRIO. So, if you would like more information, I like to tell students our website is like Google. Anything you need to know, you just go ahead and type it in the search box and it should pop up. The application is online as well. 
And on their website, they do also provide more information of all the services that they provide and how you could qualify as well. Also, some other initiatives that we used to embrace for diversity, equity, and inclusion here at Laurel Ridge is the Go Global uh, Student Activities. And as you can see, student activities does a lot when it comes to um, you know, different um, areas of DEI. Sometimes they coordinate with the DEI Council as well to bring on events and sessions that will bring awareness to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Also the library resources um, as well. We do have a page solely for um, diversity, equity, and inclusion where there's a lot of diversity um, resources, articles, podcasts. And so feel free to check it out because it is a journey for us here at Laurel Ridge. Also, we've recently, um, partake in our employee name tag. So now you could see employee wearing their name tags where they can put their pronouns, they could put um, their different levels of degrees. And so that was also a part of our initiative to be more inclusive. So that was one of our big initiatives. And so all of these activities, clubs, organizations that we have formed here helps us to achieve our mission here at Laurel Ridge which is to provide a positive, caring, and dynamic learning environment that inspires student success. We value diversity and we promote community vitality. And so this is all that is going on behind the scenes. For students, if you are interested in uh, providing feedback or providing um, you know, ideas to DEI for initiatives that you could think we could also embrace, feel free to check out our DEI page that is coming soon to where you can actually input those ideas and send it out to our council. Next page, Carrie. All right, so I did mention the DEI council. Now, what is it, okay? And so the DEI council, um, was formed here at Laurel Ridge, formerly LSCC, in 2015. It was a part of the diversity initiative set by the Virginia Community College System, so the VCCS. And yes, it was formed in 2015. So it's not new to our college. It's something that we constantly try to embrace and to make improvements to. Now, the council's purpose um, is somewhat the same as it was before, but it has evolved a little bit. Um, it is to support the college's organizational approach for embracing all of the diversity dimensions of the college and to serve as an advisory body to help lead, advocate for, coordinate, inform, and monitor process, um, progress and success of diversity initiatives. Um, its founding members consisted of at least two ex officio members, and by ex officio, I do mean the president of the college and the head of the human resources department. It also consisted of six faculty members and five administrators, as well as five classified staff. So your administrators may be the head of um, the library, like Carrie is also one of our administrators, and she's on the DEI council, or a member of the um, student support services or the lead person for that um, department. But it also consisted of staff members like myself. And that is how I uh, became interested in DEI because I was one of their classified staff members. And so it takes a village. As you can see, there are different um, categories of persons that are included in this council to ensure that there's equity to all throughout. Um, Carrie, can we click to the next slide? All right, now just a look at our past and future chairs. Now, many of you may not know who um, the names of these persons, some of you may know, but I um, just wanted to show you from 2015 um, or past chairs and now our future chairs. And so I um, served within the period of 2021 to 2022. I'll be handing that torch off to Terry Kilpatrick. And um, we work collectively as a team. It's not just the chair and co-chair and the education awareness. We do have other members still 
um, that are in the different categories I mentioned earlier, so classified staff, we do still have the exficio members. And so this is the work that is going on behind the scenes. We do meet monthly, um, so once per month, um, we did meet in person for some time until COVID, and so we're continuing to meet um, online. Now, one thing to note as new students, students are invited to our meetings, and so we will be sending out or links um, to Christopher Lambert to send out on the LEO, um, the LEO um, information that goes out weekly to students. So please be on the lookout for information as it regards to our meeting time. That way you can be involved in this journey and you can feel free to voice your opinions as well, raise concerns. We would really like for students to do so through our new um, website and to send those inquiries in, but please attend the meeting so that you can know what is going on here at Laura Ridge when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Next slide, Carrie. All right, and now I'm going to pass it on to Andy who will then discuss our past and future initiatives. Yeah, I kind of have the fun part here, not, not offensively to everyone else, but we get to talk about the cool initiatives that we've put together here at the community college. These obviously are the ones that are in the past. However, some are still uh, active. And uh, we just talked about a few before this uh, presentation today. One being the pronoun pins. We've actively made pronoun pins available for all of our students. Uh, faculty, staff, as well as community members. Uh, that was an initiative we put together last year and we were able to put uh, them out. In fact, Taj just gave me empty jars, meaning that we are in need of more pronoun pins. So I'm excited to see that they're being used or at least picked up uh, and uh, used without the community. Uh, we've added, as Taj mentioned, DEI student members. Kristen Iden, whose name you saw on the last slide, was involved with a slave dwelling project before COVID uh, in partnership with our friends over at Bell Grove. Uh, and we're always trying to engage not only our students uh, here on campus and our uh, faculty staff, but also the community around us. And that leads us into the minority owned business guide of which we worked with, uh, you know, the library, Carrie Kilpatrick there, uh, with our small business development center, Christine Kriz and Diana Patterson, Who's, who is with the uh, Hispanic Coalition in the community. We've also connected with a few NAACP uh, organizations to put together this minority-owned business guide so that all of our community can go to this website hosted through the library and choose where they would like to support businesses where they live within the footprint of Laurel Ridge. Uh, we were excited to be a co-sponsor of the very first NAACP June Juneteenth in the Winchester area. Uh, they were anticipating 500 attendees and ended up with 1,500. So needless to say, I assume we'll be back again uh, next year to support their Juneteenth celebration. Uh, we've, we are constantly collaborating with Chris Lambert and student activities on uh, speakers and engaging people uh, to just sort of collaborate between each other. Diversity art contest was something that we had done prior to the pandemic. Uh, Taj was actively involved in this and encouraging our students to sort of put some art out there that uh, uh, represents what diversity means. Uh, we, every year, I feel like uh, since I've been here, at least we've, there's been a women in leadership panels that's always exciting and engaging. We bring in community members, we bring in our leadership here. There's some really, really great things. And you guys can read through the rest of all of this. Uh, th th this is really just the tip of the iceberg. We have so many things going on from our past initiatives, but it just demonstrates uh, how active we are uh, as a committee uh, and uh, as a council uh, to making sure that we have strong messaging going out on a regular, uh, regular basis. Uh, Carrie, I think uh, it's up to you for the next slide. So future initiatives, my gosh, we were just in the past. Now here we are in the future and we have some really cool things coming up. And in fact, I, you know, I didn't look here now, but we've got seven participants. All of you should be super excited to see this because some of this is before anyone else has seen it, uh, we're giving it to you. And so uh, we are excited to announce we've partnered with Artists for ERA to bring together a really great art exhibit kicking off in August 
end of August, uh, should be arriving around the 23rd, 24th with a kickoff on the 26th. It will be here in Middletown and also in Fauquier. I encourage you to go over to the art atrium as they arrive uh, and check out this incredible artwork. Uh, showing uh, uh, the use of the ERA through the eyes of uh, famous artists like Shepard Ferry, uh, as well as folks, uh, artists within our Latinx community uh, and within our LGBTQIA plus community. It's just a really cool organizational effort. It's traveling in the United States and we're really excited to have it here uh, in Middletown uh, in August and then in September for, for our Fauquier location. Um, Ordinary Quality Book Talk, we are engaging with an author by the name of Kate Kelly uh, to talk a little bit about her book, Ordinary Quality. This is really just to say that we are always engaging authors in the area to bring uh, conversation about diversity, equity, and inclusion to our community, uh, students, faculty, staff, as well as outside uh, area. We sat down and met with the Peter Burlow Foundation. They have artists in residence in the Winchester area, and we have actually started engaging some of our professors for uh, some of the art that they're doing. So some of them may be artists that are coming doing uh, residency. Some of them are doing poetry. Uh, there's a really cool mix of individuals from a diverse background that we are engaging and connecting with uh, through a partnership. Uh, awareness months, we just wanna make sure that everyone on campus is aware of sort of the big awarenesses that are going on on a monthly basis, uh, just so that we are celebrating and acknowledging uh, the diverse population of students and community that we have. Uh, diversity in Comics Book Club, this is fresh, hot off the presses, and in fact, in fact, I'm gonna read from a little sheet because I just got the information about this, but uh, Carrie over at the library is putting together this great, and I encourage everyone to just join. And, and if you're like, I can't join, tell your friends about it just so they can come and join it. But uh, two new books coming up, there'll be virtual discussions, one, uh, Gender Queer, a memoir on September 22nd at two o'clock, and then Redbone, the true story of Native American rock band on November 17th at four o'clock. Uh, reach out to Carrie with the library if you are not getting the information on that, uh, but I'm really excited to blend both uh, diverse conversation with uh, graphic novel comics uh, in a little book club sitting. I, I think you'll see me at that, uh, both of those. I'm, I'm an avid reader. Safe Spaces Guide Clubs, uh, Taj uh, and, and um, uh, Kayla can probably talk a little bit about the Black Student Union and the Pride Club that we've got here. But I think it's also important to, to sort of acknowledge that there is a club fair coming up around the bend. Uh, Fauquier has it on Monday, August 29th. Uh, and then Middletown is Tuesday, August 30th. Um, and I think there's actually two dates. I think it's actually the 29th and September 1st, and then uh, the 30th and then 31st for Middletown. Nonetheless, it's a way to sort of engage and be aware of the clubs on campus and so that you can see what fits with the, uh, where you would like to be involved, meet new people, uh, be active with the things that are going on. And then of course, let's, Let's not forget how to be involved. You've seen the past initiatives. You've seen the future initiatives. I'm sure there's probably six or seven initiatives in your mind right now that are saying, oh my gosh, I wish I could talk to Andy about this. Well, first of all, email me and I would love to partner with you, figure out how to get that initiative started. But I encourage everyone on this call to tell your friends uh, or even just yourself to apply to be on the DEI Council as a student member. Uh, attend the DEI Council monthly meetings. We are a rambunctious, energetic, excited group. I think that not only will you uh, be able to learn a lot and to see how DEI is working behind the scenes, uh, but there's also some great and really, really passionate folks uh, that you'll want to just know. Submit your ideas through this website, obviously. Join a club, Black Student Union. You see the Pride Club down there, but there's several more that you can do. And again, I've said it 100 times already, but I can say it 101. Attend events, invite your friends. That's the excitement that we bring here to DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, Carrie, next slide, if you don't mind. Look at that. Question. Carrie already hit some hard hitting questions, but does anyone else have any questions? And if you see me on your screen, I'm looking down. That's just because I want to make sure I don't miss anyone in the chat box that's going on. Um, love the pins. Uh, thank you, Athena. I'm going to keep those going. That's fantastic. Um, and that's all I've got right here. 
Robbie's got a question. When can we apply to the council? Taj, can you help us with the answer with that or Carrie? So the applications are sent out every spring, so about the end of the spring semester. And then throughout the summer, we deliberate, and then we will select at least two students to be a part of the council. Each student will serve a one-year term, and then we select another again. That helps with the diversity aspect of it, you know, getting different perspectives, different ideas. And we're hoping that students are um, applying to be on the council to be very active. So get information from the student population, your peers, and bring it all into the ENI. You can even attend meetings with the SGA, um, have conversations with your peers in the classrooms, outside the classrooms, and bring all that energy, ideas, and concerns to the ENI, and we will see if that could be formed into an initiative, an activity of some sort. But yes, to answer your question, it's every end of spring, we deliberate in the summer, then we choose that student will start at the beginning of the fall semester all throughout the summer. Bobby, we thank you for the question. Anyone else? Athena says no questions, by the way. She's, she says, I'm done. Robbie, we thank you for being a part of this. We appreciate you being here. Well, I thank you, everyone. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to wrap this up or not. Carrie, you, any final words on your end? No, I think that uh, pretty much sums it up. Uh, you, we have our first DEI uh, council meeting on, I believe it is August 29th, I want to say. We're doing a little early this month just because of the um, Artists for ERA event, and we didn't want them to kind of like hit uh, bump into each other. So uh, look out for those links for the first DEI council meeting for August 19th. Yes. And remember to attend the club fair coming up. Spread yes. the word. I can easily uh, I can easily toss those dates out one more time because I was a little bit hodgepodge on that. So just so that everyone's aware, Fakir at Hazel Hall in the lobby, Monday the 29th, August, obviously, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And Thursday, September 1st, 12 to 3 p.m. in Middletown Cornerstone Hall. Uh, it'll be Tuesday, August 30th from 12 to 3. Wednesday, August 31st, 10 to 1. It's a much better presentation than what I gave earlier. But thankfully, Chris Lambert can just edit out that first part and we can make, make this much easier. <laughs> thank you, Andy. Uh, and thank you, Taj and Carrie. Uh, I want to thank all three of you for your time and thank you to our students who showed up. Um, I do have one last thing I want to include before we wrap it up. For any students that are participating live with us right now or watching this recorded, you go to laurelridge.edu slash summer series, complete the entry form and indicate that you attended today's session. You are then entered to win a $100 Visa gift card. You must submit no later than August the 15th. After that, we are not taking any more. Winners will be announced in Leo's weekly update, which you should be getting every single Monday and you should be reading, uh, you will be announced on our Leo's Weekly Update on August the 22nd. And we look forward to seeing you guys when classes start on the 22nd. Thank you.